Hey, what's going on? My name is Juan, and thank you for checking out Genesis Quick Tips. In this episode, we're going to go over directory structure, as well as setting up some libraries and frameworks that we could use in our child theme. You can build a child theme in plain old CSS, but it's 2016, so we're going to have some fun with SAS, Compass, Suzy, and Breakpoint. So firstly, we're going to take a look at Node.js. So Node.js gives us access to NPM, which stands for Node Package Manager. We are going to need this to load the frameworks mentioned before. So to install Node.js, you can go over to nodejs.org and click the latest stable version and run the installer. So for a quick breakdown of the tools we are going to use, let's take a look at the websites. So SAS is a CSS preprocessor. You write your CSS using SAS, and we need to use a compiler to take our SAS and render down the CSS. And to compile our SAS, we are going to be using Grunt. Grunt is a JavaScript task runner. Basically, we give Grunt a set of tasks to run, and it runs them. We will use Grunt to compile our SAS and auto-load our web pages on save. Next up is Compass. Compass is an open source CSS authoring framework. I use this to handle a lot of this cross-browser prefixing. We will go over a few examples in a bit. Next it will be Suzy. Suzy is, a, is basically a grid system, and this will allow us to easily lay out elements within our theme. And lastly is Breakpoint. Breakpoint makes writing our media queries super simple. We can store device sizes and variables and simply call on breakpoints to break at these sizes, which add responsiveness to our theme. So we know for the explanations, let's get started. So Compass, Suzy, and Breakpoint are all Ruby gems, and we could easily install these using our terminal on a Mac. You can run sudo gem install compass. We can do the same for Suzy. And one last time for Breakpoint. So now we have Compass, Suzy, and Breakpoint installed on our system, and we can now use them in our project. Okay, so assuming that you've installed Node.js using the installer on Node.js.org, we can move forward on to the next step, which is creating a package.json file. This file allows us to specify our dependencies for our project. So we'll create the new file, package.json. And in this file, we will create it by starting with two curly braces, and we will specify a name and a version. So the name would be Quick Tips version. We'll just specify 1.0.0. And now we can specify our dependencies. And that is going to be grunt. And we will use tilde 0.4.5. And we will duplicate this a few times. And we need to install contrib.watch, which is a watch plugin for grunt. And this allows us to watch for files. And we can run a task when a file has been modified. So we need the version 0.6.1. And we also need grunt-contrib-compass. And compass and sass are bundled together. So that knocks out two birds with one stone. And we also need match depth. And my batteries are dying. So 1.0.1. Remove this last comma and save. So I am going to open up the terminal. I am using PHP Storm's terminal. You could also use Mac terminal or, or whatever terminal you're using. Um, and we are going to simply make sure we are on the proper directory. So we'll PWD and we are in the quick tips directory. So um, if you are not there, go ahead and CD into this directory and we will run NPM install. Okay, so that took about 30 seconds. And once we refresh our sidebar here, we can see a node modules folder. And this holds all of the dependencies for our project. And it's a lot of files. Uh, this actually does not need to be included on the server. This is only for development, so we could remove that um, once the theme is completed, or you could have two versions. Uh, it's really up to you. But that's basically all we're gonna cover on the node modules folder. So now that we have our dependencies installed, let's move on to installing Grunt. Okay, so using npm, we could do this very easily. We just have to type in this command. npm install-g, which means globally, the grunt CLI. 
Okay. And we get a permission denied error. So we could uh, run this as sudo. And here's a quick tip. If you hit bang, bang and tab, that will place in the last command that you typed in. So we can run the grunt CLI command again. So once that is installed, we can create a grunt file. So we can hit new file, gruntfile.js. All right, so we first need to pass the module exports parameter a function. So module exports equals function. We'll pass in grunt. So first thing we need to do inside of this function is load our plugins. So we can load npm task. And the plugins we need are Grunt Contrib Watch and Compass. Okay, so now we need to initialize Grunt, and we can do that with the Grunt dot init config, and we will set up our task. So we need to set up Compass, and we also need to set up Watch. Okay, so we will start with compass. So what we need to do is pass in dev, another object, and we need to tell Grunt where to find our configuration. And we need to create a config.rb file, which is a Ruby file, which will hold all of our um, compass configurations. So we pass in options, pass another object, and the config parameter, we will pass in config.rb. So we need to create that file. Um, we will do that here in a second. So that is all for the compass task. So for the watch task, we can pass in options and we could set live reload to true. And then we can start working on SAS. So SAS, pass in an object, and we want to tell um, Grunt where to find our SAS files. So we need to pass in an array of files. So we will pass in SAS, which will be the directory. Uh, we still need to create that directory. And any file with the extension of .scss. So the asterisk means any file with, with that specific extension. Okay. And we also want to look inside of the SAS slash partials folder. And we will also pass any file with the extension of scss. So next we need to pass in the task to run. So when one of our SAS files are modified and saved, what do we want to do? We want to pass an array of our task. And in our case, we want to run compass dev, right? So what that does is it'll come up here and run the compass dev command, which will look for the config.rb file and run compass through the configuration. That is all for our SAS files. We, now we can set up PHP files. Okay, so we're going to set up our PHP files. And this is very simple. We're just going to pass asterisk.php and that will look for any PHP file within our root directory, which is our quick tips theme. And we will also pass lib. So any file within the lib directory that is a PHP file that is modified, we will auto load the web page if we have the Chrome extension in. Okay, last but not least, we are going to hit run grunt register task when the default task is going to be watch okay and that actually needs to be outside of the init that actually needs to be outside of the init config okay we'll save that so now we need to set up a config.rb file config.rb okay so we will pass in the HTTP path and that's going to be our root next is going to be our CSS directory and that is going to be period so basically wherever this file is, is the root of this file and next we need to pass our SAS directory and that is going to be equal to SAS Next is going to be our images directory. And that is going to be images. JavaScript directory.
and that is going to be JS relative assets set to true output style is going to be expanded preferred syntax is going to be SAS and line comments will be set to false. So now we want to create our SAS directory, right? So we want to create SAS directory. So now let's create our directory. So we'll create SAS and inside of that we'll create another one, partials. Let me let me explain what this config file is going to do. So it's going to look inside of our SAS directory, which is here, and it's going to look for a style.scss file. Okay, so when this file runs, it's going to compile whatever's in this file and it's going to comp compile it down to our style.css file. Inside of our style.css file, we are going to cop paste in our, um, our theme name and everything that's going to be here now. Okay, so when we click save, it's going to compile it down to style.css. Okay, so let's try to run this. Okay, so let's try to run grunt. Okay, it's looking for a contrib, which is not the case. We need contrib. So typo here. We will fix that. Save it. And we'll run grunt again. And now you see it says running watch task. So now it's waiting for a file to be modified. So if we are in our SAS directory and we'll save this file. As you can see, the task that it ran deleted the original style.css file and it wrote style.css. So let's take a look. It looks exactly the same. Okay, so we are in our style.css file and we actually are not going to add styles directly into this file. We are going to load partials. So instead of our partials directory, we're going to create a couple of partials. You create a partial by prefixing it with an underscore and naming it um, whatever you like. So this is going to be our header partial. And we could also create a underscore footer.scss file, our footer partial. And under style.scss, we are going to import these partials. So we'll import partials header. We don't need to add the extension or the underscore. Um, we just add the name of the file and we can add our footer. So we save that and we could go into our partial and we'll start modifying our header. We'll just change the background color to uh, blue. Save that and you can see our grunt is actually compiling as we save um, in the partials. Do the same for footer. We'll just cite footer and we can run background change that to purple and I messed that up it's background and if we take a look we refresh our background is blue and purple down here okay so that is going to do it for this episode I really want to keep these episodes under 15 minutes so in the next episode we are going to actually lay out the theme a little bit I really don't want to focus too much on the styles uh, I really want to focus on development, but we we still need to make the theme look decent. So we will focus on that on the next episode, but let's do a quick recap of what we covered in this episode. So we started with the package.json file. We installed Node. We set up a package.json file. We ran npm install, and then we created our grunt file. So our grunt file basically handles our tasks, such as compiling our, our SAS, and we created the SAS directory, added a few partials, and imported them partials into our style.scss file. We also created a config.rb or Ruby file, and we said we configured our compass and SAS. So we covered a lot in this episode, but we still have a little bit more setup to do with Suzy and Breakpoint before we actually get into messing with the PHP and starting to configure our single pages, our archive pages, and our administrative pages. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode. So over the next few days, take your time and play around with the new style sheet. Um, maybe go out and learn some SAS syntax and start to add some simple styles to your website. And uh, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.